Okay, so in this video, we're gonna start talking about bearings a little bit, and we'll look at a couple examples at the end. So a bearing is simply used to indicate, um, it's just used to indicate the direction of a movement of an object from a given point. So maybe you've got an airplane going in a certain direction and you wanna talk about which direction it's going. So there's a couple different types of bearings, a couple different types of ways that you can talk about them. There are what are called uh, three-figure bearings, and there's also what are known as compass bearings. So we'll talk about both those briefly. I think it should be pretty straightforward. So you also see, just to touch on, you, you often see these topics when, in, in a pre-calculus course when you're talking about the law of sine, the law of cosines, uh, and so we'll look at, at some examples related to that. So there will be some trigonometry in the questions. So to start off, let's look at three-figure bearings. And three-figure bearings are measured clockwise from north. And so let's look at a couple different examples here. So I've got 030 degrees. So again, you're, you're measuring it clockwise from north. So one thing, right, the angle, you know, your, your measurement is going to be between zero degrees and, well, you could say 360 degrees. You wouldn't say I'm going 360 degrees because you would just say I'm going due north. So, I mean, technically it's correct, right, but no one, that's not how it's used. So, so, O30 degrees, what does that mean? Well, let's remember, so we're measuring again uh, clockwise, so we're going this direction. So east would be 90 degrees. Due south would be another 90 degrees, which would put you at 180 degrees. Due west, let me squeeze this in, would be another 90 degrees, which would put you at 270 degrees. And lastly, if you're back at north, you're at 360 degrees, but like we said, you wouldn't say I'm on a bearing of 360 degrees. The person would say you're crazy. So 30 degrees, well, what's 30 degrees? Well, 45 would be sort of right in the middle. So a 30 degree angle, well, that's gonna be a little smaller. So we can just sort of roughly estimate that. So it means you're not going due north. So this angle is 30 degrees. It means you're going, well, a little bit east, but you're, you're going northeast, but mainly north. So that would be O30 degrees. Let's look next at 170 degrees. Well, we just said, it, you know, if you go 180 degrees, you're going due south. And again, that's what most people, I, I think that's the terminology that gets used. So you're going to go 170 degrees. Well, you're not quite going due south. You're mainly going south, but also a little bit east. So this angle would now be 170 degrees. And let's look at one more here, 320 degrees. Well, okay, so we said 90 degrees is due east. 180 degrees is due south. 270 degrees is due west. Again, if you add another 45, let's see, what's, what's 45? We're gonna get 315. So we're gonna be a little bit higher, right, than, than sort of right in the middle. So we'll just eyeball this and say that's gonna be a bearing of 320 degrees. So that's all the, the, the uh, three, the three figure bearings, uh, that's how they work. So let's see, compass bearings are slightly different, but not too much. So compass bearings are measured either from north or from south. And the number, notice the numbers that we have in here, 30 degrees, 70 degrees, 40 degrees, those are always gonna be less than 90 degrees. That's just, again, the, the terminolo terminology and that's how people use it. So the first part says, okay, start from north and then move 30 degrees to the east. So, okay, well, north, uh, 30 degrees east. That'll put us again right about there. So there's our angle. So we've moved 30 degrees in the east direction. And notice that's gonna be the exact same thing as, well, O30 degrees. So let's see, let's look at the next one. Change my color back. So we start from north, but now we go 70 degrees to the west. Well, this would be 90 degrees to the west. So we're not quite going all the way to 90 degrees. We're going a little bit less. 
So we'll suppose this is an angle of 70 degrees. So now we're going 70 degrees west of north. Last but not least, suppose we're, okay, let's use this last one. So we're at south 40 degrees east. So now I'm measuring my angle not from the north as in all the other examples because that's how three-figured bearings work and that's how our two previous examples also worked. But now it says start from south and move 45 degrees to the east. Or excuse me, 40 degrees to the east. I'm already thinking about 45 degrees. So let's suppose that that is... Uh, 45 degrees. Well, 40 degrees is going to be a little bit less, right? So let me get rid of this one. So now we started at at the southern point, but we moved 40 degrees 40 degrees to the east. So that's now an angle of 40 degrees. You wouldn't say, you know, I'm going north, um, you wouldn't say I'm going north 90 degrees east because, well, that would just put you, you would just say due east is the terminology. So let's see, let's look at a couple examples here real quick. So we've got three examples. I'm going to do the first two in this video. So in part one, we've got a boat that travels on a bearing of a bearing of north 36 degrees west for 25 kilometers. In part A, we want to know how many miles north has the boat traveled, how many miles west has the boat traveled. In uh, question number two, a boat is due south of a lighthouse and sails on a bearing of 290 degrees for 51 kilometers until it is due west of the lighthouse. How far away is it from the lighthouse now? And the last question, number three, is actually a question, an IB exam question, if you're familiar with the IB exam. So this one's going to be a little, bit, a little bit more tricky. So here we've got a ship that leaves a port located at a point A on a bearing of 30 degrees. It sails a distance of 20 kilometers to a point B, where it changes direction to a bearing of 75 degrees. Then it sails 25 kilometers to reach a port located at a point C. We want to find the distance between A and C, and also the bearing. So... I encourage you for sure to always try these questions on your own and if you're not so inclined well then sit back and we will talk about them right now. If you do want to try them then pause it and uh, see if you get the right answer. So okay so in part one this is question one. So a boat travels on a bearing of uh, north 36 degrees west for 25 kilometers. So okay so here's my little boat. We'll say that is due north and it's going, okay, so it's going in a westerly direction, so that is to the left. And it's only going 36 degrees, so not, you know, not quite in the middle. We'll say this is 36 degrees. And it travels that distance for 25 kilometers. And we want to know, okay, a couple things. Well, how far north has it traveled? And also, how far west has it traveled? Well, we've got a triangle at this point, so this is where I mentioned our trigonometry just comes into it. So notice I've made a right triangle, in fact, which uh, makes things a lot easier for us. So this is 36 degrees. We know that this length, the hypotenuse, is 25 kilometers. I'm just going to write 25. So we want to find how far west it is and how far north it is. So I'm going to label this, um, so you may have seen, right? I'm sure you've seen, so we have that sine of an angle is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse side. And, whoops, that cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Well, if we're looking at this angle here, 36 degrees, that's the one we're going to be using. The opposite side, right, that's going to be the, uh, the distance that it travels west. We know the hypotenuse, that is 25, has a length of 25 kilometers. And likewise, for the adjacent side, that's going to be how far it's traveled north. And again, the hypotenuse is 25. And we know the angle here, right? Let me get rid of this. We know that these angles are 36 degrees. So 36 degrees and 36 degrees. 
So now I'm going to take these two equations. So I've got sine of 36 degrees. That's going to equal the distance we travel west divided by 25. Well, if we multiply both sides by 25, we'll get that 25 multiplied by sine of 36 degrees. That's how far we've traveled west. And I am going to bust out my handy dandy calculator here, if it'll work for me. There we go. Okay, so still giving me some trouble. Okay, so I'm gonna do sine of 36. I'm gonna make sure it's in degree mode first. So let's see, sine of 36 degrees multiplied by 25. I'm getting this to be 14.69. That's going to be how far it travels west. Um, and then, let's see, so the last one, we've got cosine of 36 degrees. That's going to be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. But we said from this angle, the adjacent side, well, that's the northern, northerly, northerly side. So the same thing, we'll have the cosine of 36 degrees. That equals how far we traveled north divided by 25. So the same thing, we'll just multiply both sides by 25. So 25 uh, multiplied by cosine of 36 degrees, that's going to be how far we traveled north. So let's see, cosine of 36 degrees multiplied by 25. I'm getting this to be roughly 20.23. And again, both of these units are in kilometers. Kilometers, kilometers. And that's going to be how far we traveled north. And again, intuitively, that seems correct, right? I mean, if we're going at an angle of 36 degrees, we've gone more north than we have west. So certainly the distance we traveled north should be a little bit bigger. Okay, um, so part two, we've got a boat that is due south of a lighthouse, and it sails on a bearing of 290 degrees for 51 kilometers until it's due west of the lighthouse. We want to know how far away it is from the lighthouse now. So a very similar question here, I think. So, okay, so we know this distance is 200 and what did we say? No, I'm getting the bearings here. This is 51 kilometers. Okay, but it's on a bearing of 292 degrees. So if we think about the same thing, our, our little map we had earlier. So um, we've got due, due east. We've got due south, we've got due west. So we said this was 90 degrees, this was 180 degrees, this was 270 degrees. So we've gone, what do we say, 292 degrees. So 200, there's 270 degrees, and then we've got a little bit more. So let me just put it right there. Let's make it due west. Let's try to make it to the, to the left of the... Uh, the lighthouse. Okay, so what do we have? Well, we've got the same thing as before, but now we've got this right triangle, again, just like we had. So we're trying to figure out this distance, let's call it D that it is from the lighthouse, and that's what we don't know. Now, we need this angle here so we can use our, our uh, trigonometry again. But, well, what do we know? We know if you go all the way around, right, you've gone 360 degrees. But we've gone 292 degrees. Well, let's see, that would give us what, 68 degrees? So we've gone around, this angle is gonna be 292 degrees. That would be the distance if you went um, on this bearing. Well, to make a full circle, again, you would need 360 degrees. So our angle here is gonna be another 68 degrees. So, okay, I think we're in business now. Let me draw a separate little triangle. I think I've gone a little too far there. So a rough little triangle here real quick. So we know this is going to be now very similar to the last one. This is 68 degrees. We want this distance. We know this is a right triangle. Well, we said again that sine of an angle that has to do with the opposite angle divided by the, um, well, I take that back. I need to be more careful, right? We don't know the hypotenuse in this case, so, but we do know that tangent of an angle 
That's the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. And this would be the adjacent side in this case. And we know that that's equal to 51 kilometers. So what do we have? We've got our angle tangent of 68 degrees. That's going to be equal to the opposite side. That's going to be our distance that we're trying to find here divided by the length of the adjacent side, which is 51. Okay, well, I'll multiply both sides by 51. Let me give myself a little space. Uh, so we'll have 51 multiplied by tangent of 68 degrees. That's going to be the distance that it is due west. So again, I've got my handy-dandy calculator. So I've got tangent of 68 degrees, and now I'm multiplying by 51. I'm getting this distance to be 100, again, you know, clearly I'm approximating, 126.23 kilometers. That's going to be roughly uh, equal to that distance. So it's going to be about 126 kilometers um, due west of the lighthouse if it travels on that bearing. So, okay, kind of a couple basic questions. Again, you see these questions all the time in pre-calculus. Um, they like to talk about bearings, and then you, you're using sines and cosines and law of cosines and law of sines. We didn't do too much of that here. This was all sort of basic stuff. Um, but in the next example, you'll see that it's a little more tricky, and we will use the, uh, let's see, where'd it go? Number three, well, we will need to be a little more clever because we'll have to use... Um, we just have a boat that's on different bearings, so we'll have to use some more ideas. So, all right, um, stay tuned, and we will look at that next example. I'll make that one soon.